Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I just finished reading Ulysses by James Joyce this morning. And you wouldn't believe me, but I nearly just read this by accident. Uh, I read it when I was maybe 23 or 24. This is my first time um, reading it again in its entirety. And I got this a couple years ago, this edition, and I absolutely just love the cover design, I love the color, I love the clever typography, it has uh, yes in the title. And uh, maybe two weeks ago I picked it up and I just read the first, uh, the first line. I think this has one of the best opening lines of a novel and it has that uh, big gigantic S and it's Stately plump, Buck Mulligan came from the stairhead, bearing a bowl of lather on which a mirror and a razor lay crossed. And the funniest thing happened. All of a sudden, uh, I read all of part one, and I felt like I had a momentum. And this is certainly a book that if you're not in the right mindset, um, if you don't have that particular kind of headspace that uh, you're, you're absolutely um, not going to have any sort of enjoyable experience. And uh, I found it much more uh, readable than I did the first time that I had read it. I remember um, just thinking about how difficult it is and it's a, a elusive and there's all sorts of references and styles, but <clears throat> I've read um, a fair bit um, since the last time that I had read it, and uh, I, I, I found that I was um, kind of plugging along. And finishing it now, um, I, I, do find, uh, I do find it to be an extremely challenging um, piece of literature, but not nearly as engaging or as entertaining as um, um, my recollection had led me to believe. Um, around my early 20s, um, reading um, other modernist uh, works, like um, things by uh, Virginia Woolf and um, uh, T.S. Eliot, reading The Wasteland um, for the first time, and uh, I've grown with reading The Wasteland, because it's um, just a field of gopher holes. You come across different references, and uh, there'll be a line by Baudelaire, and uh, then you would go off and uh, read Baudelaire, and you can just uh, mine uh, The Wasteland, and then go back to it, and um, just have a a little bit more of a connection point. And Ulysses um, is like that as well. It's an incredibly elusive book, chock full of all sorts of references. And this time, um, I picked up on some things. Now, the difficulty comes into uh, The flaws. I, I, I found I, I found that it was not nearly um, as intelligent and clever as Joyce probably thought that it was. And w one example is uh, James James Joyce's sense of humor, and he certainly has uh, his own particular brand of sense of humor that's on the page, and it doesn't do it for me. There's the um, uh, puns and clever word games um, that one I, I, I just find um, maybe even juvenile um, and then unnecessary and stuck on uh, compared to um, when I'm reading Samuel Beckett he has a particular brand of uh, his own he has his own sense of humor that really clicks with me. Um, when Vladimir and Estragon uh, are uh, t 
talking in the morning, and one, one of them says, uh, where did you sleep last night? And the other one says, in a ditch. And then he responds and says, where did you find a ditch? It just cracks me up. Um, the strange thing about um, Ulysses, and something that I, I kept thinking about while I was reading it, um, the things that I know ab about the book. So it's going to be a day in the life in Dublin. And it's going to be Leopold Bloom um, bumming around in the, in the streets and in the carriage and at the funeral house. And um, we're going to just follow uh, this character from beginning to, to the end of the day. Um, then the other um, main thing that you hear about Ulysses is that it's a, a contemporary um, imagining of um, the Odyssey, and um, Ulysses is the Latinized um, name for Odysseus. Um, I've also heard, I uh, just remember uh, hearing that uh, James Joyce um, utilizes um, uh, the whole history of the English language, and you can see the styles developing. And so with, with those thoughts in mind, I thought to myself, if I stripped away the title, took away the um, authorship, and either was able to read this book on my own with absolutely um, no context, um, I wonder, would I be able to identify a clear main character? Would I say uh, Leopold Bloom is the main character? and the kind of evasive uh, Molly. Or what I think, um, well, it's much more clear that Stephen Dedalus is the, character, the, the main character. Or what I even think it has a main character at all. Maybe it's just an ensemble cast. And then uh, the, the relationship with uh, the, Odyssey, the Odyssey, which there are <clears throat> moments where you'll, you'll catch certain minuscule references, uh, just like the, the, the thinnest uh, comparison to something that might be in the Odyssey. I, I don't think, without uh, previous knowledge, I would be able to make that connection. I just, uh, I, I find it to be very flimsy. And then the, the styles, which stylistically that this novel is impressive. Um, there are many, many different, um, not, not only styles of writing, but um, formats. So you'll have uh, prose and poetry. You have these headline sections where you get uh, like a roving view of Dublin. Uh, you have actual dialogue that you would see in a play when they're out on the street. Um, you have a question-answer portion. You have uh, sections that um, feel incredibly um, dense and uh, philosophical um, like forms of essays, uh, all the way to getting to the, uh, part three with um, the great soliloquy, the, the great long um, unpunctuated monologue. Um, that has all of the yeses, uh, which, uh, <clears throat> by the end of it, the, the <laughs> getting to the last few pages and reading, um, uh, I was a flower of the mountain, yes, when I put the rose in my hair, like the Andalusian girls used, or shall I wear a red yes, and how he kissed me under the Moorish wall, and I thought, well, as well him as another, and then I asked him, with my eyes to ask again yes and then he asked me would I yes to say yes my mountain flower and first I put my arms around him yes and drew him down to me so he could feel my breasts all perfume yes and his heart was going like mad and yes I said yes I will yes absolutely beautiful <clears throat> something that I was very grateful for 
uh, reading this, there was a portion where um, it was Stephen Dedalus and Buck Mulligan and whoever else, uh, they started talking about Pyrus. And um, I had that go for a hole, a rabbit hole feeling. Um, and I took a break, I put the book down at some point, and I picked up uh, The Life of Pyrus by uh, Plutarch. And I read that, and then I read, um, I wanted something uh, ancient and also an, an exciting adventure, and I read The Expedition of Cyrus by Xenophon. Uh, and then I read some, play, um, I read some uh, platonic dialogues. Uh, I read a few more lives of uh, Plutarch and just found myself immersed in the ancient world. So impressed. And then I went back uh, to James Joyce. I, I think that uh, the elusiveness uh, still has its charm. Uh, but it's almost like uh, seeing a person um, covered in beautifully designed tattoos. Uh, their arms are all tattooed. They have uh, their chest and their back, maybe neck tattoos. They're just covered in tattoos and it looks really cool and it looks um, like there's ob obscure references and symbols and it reminds me of th that feeling of um, going up to somebody and saying like oh my gosh like your tattoos are so uh, beautiful but what, what, are, what do they all mean and the person could have um, legitimate personal uh, meaningful reasons for each tattoo but very it's very unlikely um, that it's going to enrich the experience it's usually going to be something rather um, less in, the, the the explanation is going to be less interesting uh, so just some strange tattoo and go oh that that reminds me of my mother or something um, and I, I had kind of that feeling with the references on the page, even though the adventure afterwards uh, can be quite good. Unlike reading uh, The Wasteland, where they're, um, they feel more, those references feel more integrated and purposeful and uh, meaningful and enrich the poem. Because here, I, I feel like there's things that are just, uh, it's like everything, and any everything and anything is thrown into this book. And so it feels uh, random and jarring. You just have a, uh, a joke that sticks out. Um, and maybe the, la the last thing I'll, I'll say uh, is for a, a book like this that has uh, such a notorious reputation. Uh, it, it's very difficult to have the, a 21st century uh, a conversation, uh, a, a conversation about 21st century literature without um, talking about the modernists and uh, and Ulysses by James Joyce and other things by James Joyce. And um, through the years, uh, really not recently, but in, in my 20s anyway, I would talk to people that were these James Joyce super fans and would say thing, crazy things like, um, you only need to read James Joyce. Everything uh, that you can find at the heights of literature, it's in James Joyce and every word um, is perfect. And if, if you're not enjoying it, it means that you don't fully understand um, all of these subtle complexities that are going into um, the most beautiful language in the English, um, uh, the most beautiful prose in the English language, uh, which is, uh, I love the enthusiasm, but clearly um, there's other things to be reading than James Joyce. Um, and I also don't think, um, not enjoying it um, doesn't, doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not bringing um, <clears throat> my end of the bargain to the table. Now, uh, it certainly is an impressive book. It, it's quite a, a creative um, feat. The, the amount of imagination that would come into just being able to put together a single 
page of this craziness is is quite impressive. Um, and I'm glad that I read it again. I kind of have my my verdict, my judgment on the book. Um, there are other, um, and, and I like modernist works, and there's just other um, modernist things that I just prefer. Um, if I was going to read a modernist novel about the day in the life of somebody, um, I would much rather reread Mrs. Dalloway. At least it's identifiable. I can recognize that it's a day in the life, uh, which I, I think if someone didn't even bring it up before someone read it, I, I don't think um, it's, it's clear. Um, or uh, reading um, Thomas Pynchon or um, Samuel Beckett's uh, great trilogy, uh, Malone, Malloy Dies, and uh, The Unnameable. Uh, I do think uh, there's a lot of fun to be had in Ulysses. Um, um, perfect or the, the best modernist uh, novel. Um, not not for my money. Um, certainly strange. I love strange things. Um, I will probably still be picking this up uh, and reading random selections. Um, I highly doubt that I'll um, uh, feel the need to reread this um, again. Absolutely love the cover, cover though, so I'm definitely keeping it. Um, kind of general thoughts about uh, Ulysses. I didn't go into too many specifics. Um, I'll maybe end with this. There was a, a portion of the book, I don't remember where, um, and these characters are talking, um, and it's Buck Mulligan, and Stephen Dedalus, I think Leopold um, makes some appearance, there's other characters, and they're talking about uh, Shakespeare, and they're philosophizing and having these um, uh, kind of grand thoughtful conversation, saying very important, clever things, and speaking in Latin, um, other obnoxious things like that. And then at some point, somebody uh, like looks around and says, hey, like, where did so-and-so go? And uh, the response by whoever was, well, they probably got tired of all of our brilliant theorizing. <laughs> Maybe that's, they just got exhausted with... Uh, self-important, brilliant theorizing. But um, those are my thoughts. It's, it's a, a complicated book. I have complicated thoughts. Um, glad I read it again. So let me know if you've read uh, Ulysses. I, I know I didn't go into too many real specifics, but um, it's like an 800-page book or something. Um, so let me know if you've read Ulysses. Um, and thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you would like. Uh, thank you and take care.